Two generations before Darwin, there lived a French naturalist and botanist who has proposed, perhaps, the second most famous theory of evolution. So I'd like to introduce Lamarck and his legacy and explain a little bit how it fits in with the dominant Darwinian evolutionary paradigm that we live with today. In the centuries before Charles Darwin, there were competing theories that tried to explain why the earth had so many different species. For some religious people, it was easy. God had created them in the beginning, and all species are fixed and permanent. Some scientists thought that a vital force acted independently of chemical or physical reactions, and this drove speciation. Still others argued that new life forms could be spontaneously generated from inorganic material. Lamarck believed this, and it was definitively disproved by Pasteur 100 years later. So Jean-Baptiste Lamarck believed some of all of these things, but the reason we are still talking about him today is that he proposed one of the first comprehensive theories of the transformation of species. In Lamarck's theory, characteristics which parents have acquired during their lifetime can be inherited by their offspring, now known as the theory of inheritance of acquired characteristics. There were two major forces in Lamarck's system of evolution. The adaptive force, which created differences at the levels of species and genus, and the complexifying force, which was responsible for the larger changes leading to differing families and orders. The adaptive force is probably the best known Lamarckian concept. The behavior of parents during their lifetime has an effect on their offspring. Uh, this can be summed up in the use-disuse theory. That is, if an organism uses an organ often, it is strengthened, and if an organ is unused, it is weakened, and these traits can be passed down the generations. The classic example is the neck of the giraffe. We imagine the giraffe's parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and so on, stretched their necks to reach ever more leaves. This repeated strengthening for Lamarck would be heritable, eventually giving present-day giraffe species longer necks than their ancient ancestors. Lamarck also asserted that the proportion of use to disuse will change as the environment changes a key insight that surely inspired Charles Darwin. So, uh, that's the adaptive force, and it was supposed to be responsible for creating differences on the level of species and genus. Kind of like, as you see, with these four different giraffe species which live in different parts of the African continent. The complexifying force, on the other hand, was supposed to be responsible for major differences in body type. I imagine worms becoming more complex into something like insects, or invertebrates complexifying into vertebrates. This force implied a goal, as though the transformation of species was on a path towards ever greater complexity, independently of environment. Lamarck, like many others of his time, believed in a hierarchy of life. That is, evolution was making progress, and we humans represented the top step of the latter. Lamarck's theory was appealing. It suggested that organisms could actively take part in their own species' evolution, and since we humans were at the top of the complexity scale, well, we must have been doing something right. In the decades after Charles Darwin's death in 1882, 
Lamarckian evolution went through a competition period with Darwinian evolution, seen here in yellow, as scientists carried out experiments to prove or disprove various theories, including an infamous experiment to see whether cutting off a mice's tail would influence their offspring's tail phenotype. Uh, it did not. But by the 1930s, the modern synthesis of biology, shown here with purple highlight, had satisfactorily merged Darwinian natural selection with Mendelian genetic inheritance, and interest in Lamarckism partially faded. However, around the turn of the 21st century, recognitions of problems with the modern synthesis has led to a revival of Lamarck's reputation. Darwinian natural selection seems to be contradicted, for example, when we note that DNA sequences often evolved in ways that reduced the fitness of the organisms that bore them, according to Rose. Additionally, interest in epigenetics has gotten more biologists evoking Lamarck's name. According to Wu and Morris, epigenetics is the study of changes in gene function that are heritable and that do not entail a change in DNA sequence. Or I would say it's the change of gene expression which is not caused by a different encoding of the genes themselves, but perhaps caused by environmental changes. Does that sound Lamarckian? Well, one often cited story of parent behavior influencing gene expression in offspring comes from World War II. For about eight months, the Netherlands experienced a sudden and severe food shortage, during which over 20,000 people died of starvation. Babies born to mothers during this Dutch hunger winter of 1944 to 45 grew up to have significantly different health outcomes than their brothers or sisters who were born before or after the hunger winter. It was especially noticeable in children who were in the first three months of gestation during the famine. Among these uh, differences from their brothers and sisters, as adults, these hunger babies, the, the people born during the food shortage, had higher rates of obesity and cholesterol. Now, their DNA certainly hadn't changed, but expressions of some genes triggered while in the mother's womb seems to have affected them throughout their lives. While the data on the Dutch hunger winter cohort is now well established after over 40 years of results, the discussion is ongoing. It seems the behavior of the Dutch parents, meaning their lacking of food, has altered the gene expression of their offspring. Furthermore, the results have been published that say some alterations have been passed down to the next generation, the grandchildren of the mothers who gave birth during the hunger winter. So, uh, what's your position? Does the arm of a blacksmith carry over to his son? This, along with the giraffe theory, was proposed by Lamarck. I'm not sure if those same examples are much believed by scientists today, but uh, is the use or disuse of a mother's womb similar to Lamarck's description of heritable use, disuse? Do you think there's evidence to support the complexifying nature of evolution? I think the second part of Lamarck's theories is not in fashion these days, but it sounds nice, doesn't it? Whether you believe Lamarck's two forces or not, it remains true that 
he argued for an environmental effect on the heritability of phenotypes. And at least for that reason, he deserves a spot on our list of great biologists. Thank you.